Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Talking Assets. In this episode, I want to walk through an example of um, how to calculate or how to prepare a statement of cash flows. All right, so we are going to prepare a statement of cash flows using the indirect method when we calculate cash flows from operating activities. And, and let's, let's hop over now to the computer and let's look at an example together. All right, so on your screen, what you see is a, a sample problem um, that I have set up for us here. Um, and this sample problem provides you with uh, this company called Pride Industries Incorporated. It provides you with their income statement as well as their balance sheet. And often, what when we prepare our statement of cash flows, um, we are going to do that, we're gonna prepare that statement after we have prepared the income statement and the balance sheet. And the reason for that is because when we use the indirect method for calculating cash flows from operating activities, we are going to rely on the numbers that are in the income statement and the balance sheet, okay? So let's get started here. So when we prepare um, a cash flow statement, our primary goal is simply to say, what is our beginning cash at the beginning of the financial reporting period? And what is our ending cash at the end of the financial reporting period? And in this case, we have uh, 598 at the beginning of our, our financial year, 2025, right? Because we ended 2024 with 598. We're gonna begin 2025 with 598 so that's our beginning and then we end the year with 521 and the cash flow statement is simply trying to explain how did we get from 598 to 59 or 521 what explains that what were the cash inflows what were the cash outflows okay and these reconciling items that are in the middle we're going to put them into categories so we are going to say that these reconciling at items fall into one of three categories. We have operating activities, we have investing activities, and we have financing activities. Okay, so we have three categories. Now, they're all reconciling items. They all explain the inflows and outflows and how we got from 598 to 521. But if we want to discern meaning, if we want to get some meaning out of these numbers, it's useful to put those inflows and outflows into three categories, okay? And we're going to say like the operating stuff, we're going to put all the items in there that relate to running our day-to-day -day business, our main operations. And any cash flow, inflow or outflow that relates to like investing in something, purchasing a piece of equipment or um, selling a piece of equipment or whatever it might be it, a, a capital asset transaction. We're going to put that into its own category, investing activities. And then any transactions where we're borrowing money or paying money back for, on a loan or we're buying stock, we're buying stock back in the open market, we're repurchasing our own stock or we're selling new shares of stock. Any transactions with creditors and owners, we want to look at them separately. But really, this is just our methodology for kind of organizing uh, these inflows and outflows of cash, okay? So we're just gonna put the stuff in the middle, those reconciling items that explain how we got from here to here, we're gonna put them in the three categories, okay? And that, that's what you see in this cash flow statement that's on your screen is we're simply um, putting these things into categories. So when we start our cash flows, um, our statement of cash flows, many companies or the majority of companies or you know all companies um and I, I'm, I'm smiling here because um the requirement under gap is that if you prepare your statement of cash flows um in the operating activity section if you use what is called the direct method you are required to also disclose the indirect method in your notes to the financial statements. So almost all companies, when they go to prepare their cash flows from operating activities, they're going to use what is called the indirect method of cash flows, or the indirect method of calculating cash flows from operating activities. And 
The, the idea behind um, the indirect method for operating activities, the idea behind this is very simple. So the idea is that net income is equal to um, cash income plus accrual income. So for example, if we make a sale to a customer and we sell that we sell our product to the customer on account, we're going to say debit accounts receivable. And let's say it's for $100. And we are going to say credit uh, sales revenue for 100. Okay. And when we think about this transaction, because we're crediting sales revenue, which is over here, we are increasing our net income. Okay. Now that net income has gone up, but we have not collected cash. So what this represents is income that we have recorded that is based on the fact that we're following accrual accounting. In other words, we're recording sales as we earn them rather than when we collect cash. Okay. So our net income of 100 is equal to zero dollars of cash income and one hundred dollars of accrual income. Okay, so all of our income for this transaction has been generated from the accrual rules. Now we've earned it. I mean, we've built the customer, we've delivered the product or service to the customer, but we haven't collected cash yet. So we couldn't. We can't say that this is cash income yet. Okay. Well, cash income is just another way of saying cash flows from operating activities. Okay. So if we recognize this relationship, what we can do is we can get to our cash flows from operating activities indirectly. We can back into it by recognizing the relationship between net income and cash and accrual income. So what we can do here is we can say, if we start with net income, we can remove all of the accrual stuff and we'll back into our cash flows from operating activities. Okay. That's the idea behind what we're doing here. So what we're going to say is we're going to start here with net income, which is 485. And I highlighted this yellow because I wanted to show you the connection between the statements. Okay. So our cash flow statement is pulling the net income number from the income statement. And that's why we have to prepare our income statement first. All right. And then the indirect method says, well, let's remove all these accrual things. The first thing we need to remove is depreciation expense. Depreciation expense is debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. It's an expense, it reduces net income, but it is non-cash, okay? So we're gonna say, let's add this back. We're gonna say add back depreciation expense, okay? And then accounts receivable. Now the rule here is for all operating assets and all operating liabilities, we wanna remove the accrual effects. So on the asset side, the rule is assets up, subtract, okay? Assets down, you add. And then on the liability side, liability, um, liability up, we add. Liability down, we subtract, okay? Assets up, sub subtract. Assets down, add. So it's opposites, right? Up, subtract. Down, add. On the liability side, it's the same direction. Liabilities up, we add the, the change in liabilities. Liabilities down, we subtract it, okay? So you can see um, accounts receivable here, it has gone down. So when accounts receivable go goes down, we wanna add back that change. And if you wanna, you know, get the intuition behind this. Why are we adding it back? Well, because we collected cash. That I mean, that the only reason that accounts receivable has gone down here is probably because we've collected cash on amounts owed to us by customers. So we're going to say the fact that it has gone down indicates that our cash flows have gone up. Okay. So we are going to, for these operating assets, we are going to say a decrease is an increase in cash flows and an increase is a decrease in cash flows. So what we want to do is we want to subtract um, the prior year 
or I'm sorry, we want to subtract the current year from the prior year, okay? And we can use the same formula. So 207, um, so we're comparing accounts receivable, and we can do this for inventory. So inventory looks like it went up, so we want to subtract that. Uh, prepaid insurance, prepaid insurance has gone up, so we want to um, subtract that. And then there are really no other operating assets here in the asset section. Equipment is a capital asset, it's a long-term asset. So we're not going to use that. And we also want to look at operating liabilities. Now, operating liabilities, we want to do just the opposite. We want to say, take the current period and subtract the prior period. Okay. So, oper or, I'm sorry, accounts payable have gone down by 3,000. So we want to subtract that decrease. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here for accrued liabilities, right? Uh, let's see. We got accrued liabilities that has gone down, so we want to subtract that. Income tax payable, so we want to um, subtract this. So we want to say, um, yep, that's that's the formula there. The spreadsheet was getting it for us, and so now we have um, each of these items taken care of. Notes payable, that's a financing activity, so that's okay. We're not going to put that in the operating section. So I believe we've gotten everything for cash flows from operating activities, okay? Now let's move on to investing activities. Now, if we look at uh, our equipment account, it looks like um, our gross equipment value, right, before depreciation, that has gone up, which is suggesting that we've purchased equipment, okay? So we wanna say, um, we're gonna do the prior year minus the current year, and this will capture the negative effect of us spending cash on the purchase of equipment. Okay, so we got that. It doesn't look like there's any other investing activities here from looking at the balance sheet. And if we think next about financing activities, and again, these are like transactions with um, banks, lenders, creditors, and also shareholders, we want to look at whether or not we borrowed money or we paid money back. And so here we have a notes payable. The notes payable has gone up, which means we borrowed money. Um, so we're going to say um, notes payable there minus uh, current period. We, we had proceeds from the issuance of a notes payable. Um, there's no other creditor transactions here I'm seeing in the balance sheet. And if we think next about what's going on with shareholders, what we're doing with shareholders, if you look at common stock here, common stock has gone down from 1,602,000 to 1,092,000, which is suggesting that we repurchased uh, stock. And so we can say that is a cash outflow. So we're gonna say current period minus the um, prior period, which is 510. And then we also have, um, we also have to consider whether or not we pay dividends. And so this is a little more this involves another calculation here. So if we think about retained earnings, right? So our beginning retained earnings was 869. And then our ending retained earnings was 414, okay? Well, there's only really two transactions that can affect retained earnings here. And it's income that we generate because when we record a closing entry at the end of a financial reporting period, we take all of these temporary income statement accounts and we put them into retained earnings, right? So um, that will increase retained earnings if we have income, it'll decrease it if we have a loss. And then the other thing that flows through retained earnings is the distribution of retained earnings or dividends, okay? So the fact that this has gone from 869 to 414, when we had income of 485, that's suggesting to us that there were dividends paid and probably pretty sizable dividends. So we can say our net income is 485, and we can back into our dividends number by saying, what is our ending minus the sum of the beginning and um, the uh, net income? So this will equal 940, okay? So we're gonna say our dividends were a cash outflow of $940,000, okay? All right. So our net change in cash here is a decrease of 
um, 575. So our net change in cash is 575. And looking at my numbers here, um, that doesn't seem to make too much sense. Um, something is off here. And I think I have a formula error, which is very common when you're working in Excel. And so let's uh, practice a little troubleshooting here. And so let's check our formulas, um, our cash. And there it is. There's the, the error in the formula. So you'll see I am um, my net cash flows from operating activities is pulling only from the net income and the change in income tax payable. That is a mistake. That's a formula error on my part. So what I want to do is I'm going to say this is equal to um, the sum of all of these items. So I'm going to just add straight down. So that, that was a mistake on my part. Okay, so now I have 1140 of net cash flows from operating activities. That looks good. It's capturing everything. This is capturing that. Let's see if this is right. Check all your formulas. So it's, it's, it's good practice to check your formulas here. Um, and another, I mean, a good way, a good habit to get into when you're working with spreadsheets is just create check figures any, any place you can. So for example here, in my balance sheet, I want to make sure that the difference between as total assets and total liabilities and shareholders' equity, I want to make sure those two things are equal, so I should have no difference when I subtract them. And so my check figure there, that's what I'm calling a check figure. I'm calling this a check figure. It's checking my work. Um, so the assets and liabilities look good there. That's a good check. Um, and okay, so coming back to this, um, my net change in cash then that looks correct as well it's down seventy-seven thousand dollars. what is my beginning cash let's just link the formula here my beginning cash is 598 and so my ending cash is 521 that matches my ending cash in the balance sheet if i want i can put a check figure in here and these two should be equivalent so i, I should see zero difference and that's in fact what i have all right so now what we've done, if we just kind of step back from this and we, we look at this, um, we are saying that our cash flow went down by 77, or I'm sorry, our, our cash balance has gone down by 77,000. And the reason for it is that we had, it looks like a good cash year in terms of our operations, primarily offset by the payment of a big dividend, okay? and also the repurchase of, of common stock. And there, there's some other things that are in there that kind of equal out in inflows and outflows that kind of offset. But the big things that have gone on in terms of our cash balance is we had very strong cash flows from running our business and we repaid, um, we, we rewarded our owners, we, we distributed to them some of that income that we, we generate, generated during the period. We paid them dividends. And we also repurchased stock, which oftentimes investors like as well. So we had a good year and we rewarded investors. And that's the beauty of, of you know, knowing this language of business. You're able to understand what went on in the business by just looking at these statements. All right, well, um, that concludes this episode of Talking Assets. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. I hope it helps you understand um, the construction of the statement of cash flows a little more. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.